We will connect create Our next story what is good All oh, the world be great Don't let the fear steal your peace no Don't let the fear steal your peace Hi, this is Christina Picas, and I'm going to show you how you can use Airtable to organize and track your sewing. Now, you may not enjoy organizing and tracking your sewing, but I find it fun, and I actually kind of enjoy hearing about how other people do it too. So, happy to have any comments um, telling me your method. I recently saw Michelle talk about how she uses Trello, um, which has some things in common and some things that are different. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. When you have an account on Airtable, uh, when you go to Airtable.com, you'll go. You'll be here at the dashboard you can see they have a lot of different templates. So Airtable is sort of like a spreadsheet and it's sort of like a database in that um, you can link between tables. I'll show you more in a minute. These things like event marketing, user studies are just some of a few of the like million templates that they have. Uh, that you can get started with. You can start completely from scratch, or I actually have some copy ones with that don't have my data in them that you can take and use as a template, and I'll share them with you. But let's go ahead and click through and look at my sewing patterns. Okay, so I have tables, and then each table has records in it. And you can show these as like a spreadsheet, but I have these um, gallery or grid view showing. I have one for patterns, one for projects, one for fabric, plans, and then a pattern wish list. Um, at different points when I've discussed how I use the tool, I haven't necessarily mentioned um, the pattern wish list plans. I, th some of those are newer than others. As I've gone through and I've uh, used this more, I've um, added and refined what I put in a record. I have a complete listing, a fairly complete listing of all the fields in a record in my blog post, which I'll also link to. But let's uh, look at one as an example. So I have the name, I have the designer. The designer's not controlled at all, um, so you can get typos, but it's pretty easy to just flip it to spreadsheet view and um, type that in. I didn't want to have an authoritative list of designers, but you could do that. You could have like a checkbox or drop down or whatever else. You can have um, attachments, files, you could save the copy of the pattern here, but I mostly save them on um, Google Drive just so they're all together and searchable. You can have short uh, or long text fields, multiple choice, uh, check boxes, all kinds of different input. So I have the name, the designer, notes about it. Um, I usually try to put a line drawing in here if that's possible. Whether or not I've printed it, whether or not I've printed it in A0. And then required stretch. I've added that fairly recently because I found that, um, well, I needed it. <laughs> so when I'm in a fabric store, I try to just use Airtable. There's an app you can use on the phone. It's very quick, very easy. Uh, instead of you know going and opening up the, the pattern to check there on the spot. Now categories, I have tops, bottoms, undergarments and sleep, accessories and home, if it's a pattern add-on, dress, swim or exercise. Certainly um, you would add whatever makes sense for you. And for whom, 
I have women, men, or like it's like curvy, straight. Actually, I might not even have men yet. Um, kids, you know, for house, things like that. And then for fabric, I have, um, you know, all the different things that fabrics that could be useful for it. In fabric requirements, you'll see like if it says for 45 inch fabric, you need this many yards. If you do the long sleeves, you need this many. Um, I have all that here in the fabric requirements field. So I think that could actually be done a little differently, um, but it's good for now. So here's where we get to some of the cool uh, linking aspects. Um, in the projects, I use that to link to the projects table. So if I ever add a project and I say I've used this pattern for it, then they're linked together. So here I go over to this, this blazer and a picture of me wearing it, different changes I made to it, and then it also links to the fabric. But that's kind of getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. Um, there is a fabric link here and there's a plans link here. So if you buy a pattern and you immediately know what you plan to do with it or what fabric you want to use um, for it, uh, you can go ahead and, and link to them. When you have this whole listing, you can sort, you can filter, you can say, just show me dresses that use woven. Just show me things for kids. Um, you can sort, you can just do a regular find on the page. Um, you can, you know, filter by designer, uh, things like that. I will say because of the way I entered the, um, the yardage, I don't have a way to, to sort and filter by that. Like show me things that require less than a yard of fabric or something like that. Um, I would love to do that, but it's, it would be, it, it's very difficult because you have the different aspects of it. Um, like whether or not it's sleeves and things like that. So, um, let's see. So here it is looking like a, um, you know, like a spreadsheet. And so that way you can go through and you can, um, you know, you can clean things up and sometimes it's easier when you're, if you buy like, for example, I bought a book that had a bunch of patterns in it and needed to add a bunch at once. And so you can do that um, and, and go down. Um, and then there's a form that you can do as well, which you might find uh, easier. Okay. So projects, um, it's it exactly what it sounds like. Let's go down to the bottom. Okay. Um, there, it's, it was loading the pictures a little slowly. So this is a dress I made recently. I just give it a name and a little notes about it, a picture. Um, I link to the pattern, so I can just go there and find the pattern. And then I have progress, whether it's complete or not, or like some other options, selected, have sewn, just need hems, stuff like that. Uh, I added a last modified field on a couple of these because I found that I just wanted to sort by, you know, that have the most recent at the top or the bottom. View might be like if it's a view A, view B. Um, here's a narrative about or like a text box for fabric information, a complete check box, um, and then a link to the, the fabric. Let's see, a link to the pattern, link to the fabric, right? And then let's go ahead and go to the fabric. So a name, I might have some notes here, like it's partial, it has a hole in it, it's really soft, it, you know, whatever. I don't know, it's different kinds of notes picture this picture I kind of stole from the the places uh, website the website picture but I sometimes I take a picture um, the length this is I don't edit this length here when I use some fabric not the whole thing that's the length that I bought if there's less than the full amount left I'll add it into the notes um, and then further down here so the width of the fabric 
and intended pattern. You see, I intended to use it for the a blouse, but I ended up using it for a dress, no problem. Store, price, um, composition, stretch. Um, so it would be kind of cool to, to, to match this stretch with the other stretch, but you know, so far you just you know, use it to read off. And then a link to what projects it was used for. And also I had plans. And I have this drop down, how much is left, it's gone. But if I have enough for another project, large scraps, something like that, I'll put in the notes um, how much I have left. Okay, so let's just go to plans really quickly. I just took a screenshot and what she did and why I appreciated it, what I wanted to do. And then if I have from fabric ideas, um, pattern ideas, and what I still need to get to do it. And if I've started or discarded, I have that um, filtered so it doesn't show me things that I've already made. It, it They're filtered out. So let's see. Fabric. You could also filter out the stuff that you don't have enough left. And, you know, uh, so I just added this the other day, uh, and um, this looks just like the Anzu skirt, except I'd probably do longer. Pattern wish list I find um, to be useful, like around sale time. Uh, one of the things I added here is like, why am I not buying it? If I'm not sure, it's too expensive. Like if it's too expensive and then have a good sale, then, you know, it's a good time to get it. So you see, I've added some um, refinements along the way. Um, let's let's add a new pattern. I just bought a new pattern. So I'm gonna go and go to Acrobat. And so here, um, this is a Love Notions pattern, so it has a nice um, line drawing at the front. I generally just grab it right from here. I take a snapshot of the line drawing and I go back and wait, what's it called? It is called the dock side. And if I'm not sure what I'll use to search for it, I add a lot of extra words. Um, men's polo, Henley, and uh, uh, tea <laughs> shirt okay and it's both from love notions all right and then um, for attachments you can either upload or you can um, just go to upload and then hit paid and hit paste you can also connect to uh, any one of these services and pull from there and I've certainly done that from um, done that from Google but uh, I find you know this works the best just from cutting and paste so I just bought it today I haven't printed it I don't know what the required stretch is so that's where we go through and um, let's see we're gonna need this oh so you might say like well what rec what fabric requirement do you use um, I use for my size or if it's a kid's, um, for my, um, child's size when I plan to make it. So a light to mid weight, um, it doesn't look like there's actually a required stretch in here. So I'll leave that blank. And category, it's a top for men. Oh, I do have a men category now. Fabric, it's knit. Or it could be used for sweater and let's do the smaller size right now. Um, so, so 60 inches wide, one and a quarter. One and a half. I 
I don't have any projects yet, obviously, and fabric, and I don't have any plans for it yet. It's actually a target of opportunity. It was on sale today, and um, also I used uh, an ambassador's um, code for that, so I got it on a great deal, and my son will grow into it at some point. So anyway, that concludes my um, tutorial on how to use Airtable. I will have a link here to um, a um, blog post where I talk about the various fields in some more detail. And I'll also give you a link to my uh, sample one. And I'll uh, link to Michelle talking about Trello and how she does it um, just as an example. Uh, I hope this was helpful and I'm happy to answer any questions. People can not create All in the store of what is good I want the world to be great Don't let the fear steal your peace, no Don't let the fear steal your peace